sponsored by DCP Player, a simple way to view a DCP on any Windows-based PC. Hi folks, I'm Michael Lewis and uh, this is the Digital Filmmakers Panel. The next hour or so we're going to talk about something that is, has great impact to everybody in this room and that is the transformation from analog to digital. So we're going to spend the next hour talking about that and I'm very excited to be on the panel with the three of these guys. I think they're probably the best people in the world to talk about this subject and it's uh, a true pleasure to be on the same panel with George Lucas, Jim Cameron, and Jeffrey Katzenberg. How about a round of applause? So George, I'm going to start with you. Okay. <laughs> you've uh, you've been a pioneer in digital for quite some time, uh, from the delivery uh, of of, uh, of movies to theaters, sound, visual effects, capture. From a filmmaker standpoint, what does digital provide you as a filmmaker? What's the difference? Well, I've always used the analogy, and I think it's very apt in terms of um, uh, the, the problem of an artist. Uh, from the beginning of time, uh, all art is technology, whether it's learning to pick up a piece of charcoal and scratch on a wall, or coming up with the idea of you can use yellow rocks and add color to the development of the proscenium arch and all kinds of things, no matter what, or the printing press. Um, in graphic arts, the move from fresco painting, where you're inside a building and you need a giant crew, uh, you have to work under a time schedule before the plaster dries, uh, and you need a, a guy who only mixes blue paint and he's been doing it for 20 years, and his father was doing it before him, and his father was doing it before him. And uh, you have all these very talented, creative people, and you have to organize them and work, and uh, it becomes very complicated in terms of an organization, in terms of your creative vision, and that sort of thing. And then comes along the invention of oil paint. Oil paint means the artist can go outside, paint outside in the sun, see the way the sun actually falls on things, paint it, if it doesn't like it, you can paint over it. The, the freedom for an artist in that situation is just uh, incalculable. It just completely frees him to have all kinds of ideas, it frees his imagination, and that's basically what digital does. Digital takes you, you know, without digital, I mean, we started at ILM, you know, many, many years ago, and we were basically limited very, very uh, definitely by the technology. And when I put Star Wars, um, and um, realizing that we were being held back and that we couldn't go digital, that started me on my quest in 1975, really, to try to come up with a better idea using new digital technology. Um, and uh, because everybody else was doing it, all the other uh, industries were using it. And it obviously had the same effect on them. It made everything faster, cheaper, better, and freed them up to be more creative. Um, and uh, I've been sort of pushing that ever since, but it's definitely such a freedom. And it's all artists have pushed up against the technology ceiling. And they're, they're battling two issues. One is the technology ceiling, and two is resources. So, and any good artist knows that you have to somehow come up with a patron or somebody or a cheap way of doing things, and you have to overcome the technology, which is usually the best way to make your resources go further. Um, and those are like the paintbrush and the paint. And um, I think digital can just open that whole um, arena. Uh, when it came to projectors and projection, we had a, one of the problems, which we've you know, been here many years, uh, was the quality of the presentation. And we developed the TAP program, THX, to improve the sound in the theaters. We did it to uh, 
the TAP program to make sure that a good print got in the theater, that it was timed correctly, that it looked and sounded like the, the filmmaker wanted it to be, that it didn't get scratched and dirty and you know damaged and all that sort of thing. Out of that grew the notion that if we could get digital projection, we wouldn't have to worry about TAP anymore. We wouldn't have to worry about the quality of the print. We wouldn't have to worry about the fact that after the tenth week, it doesn't look at all like it did in the first week, and all those kind of things. Which at the time, uh, to some people, they said, "Well, it's very minor. What is that really?" Most people go the first weekend anyway. Well, it's not a matter of that. You want your film to look perfect every time it's shown, and you want the audience to get a great experience out of it. That's what we're here for. No matter whether they look at it two weeks later. Or two months later or whenever they look at it. So those two things came together and that's why, you know, it's trying to keep your vision intact and also have the flexibility to do anything you want. Jim, anything to add? No, I think George hit the, hit the main points. I mean, from, from my perspective, you know, digital, uh, you know, uh, computer technology has allowed the creation of worlds that would not have been possible. Uh, you know, when I started, uh, my first film was in the 84 Terminator. Everything was done on film with optical printers. And when we started uh, Digital Domain in, in 91, there was a big discussion about whether we should have an optical department. And I said, I don't think we should have an optical department. We are right at the moment in history right now where we can start a company and we can get a two-year jump on everybody else by going all digital. And they fought me pretty hard, but that's the, way, that's the way we did it. All that stuff, all those battles have all been fought and won. And the great thing about it now is that as filmmakers, you know, we're at a point really where uh, if we can imagine it, we can create it. You know, I mean, there are no limitations now. We can actually essentially duplicate photographic reality using all of the, all of the great tools that the CG artists and software coders have, have written over the last 20 years. And, you know, then you take it out to the exhibition side and you think about what we can, the image that we're putting up in theaters today is pretty stunning compared to where it was when I started. And, you know, certainly George had a big role in getting us into digital and, in, and just keeping the quality of the, of the image up, uh, kind of really out there in the field where it really counts. And something flashed into my mind just when you were talking there about the prints. You know, it's, it's really interesting. But the Titanic played so long that our prints fell apart. And we actually left theaters only because our, our prints were unwatchable. And we, you know, we didn't, we didn't do a whole new round of printing. I think we made like an additional hundred prints or something. They literally were just falling out of the projectors. And that's, that, you know, we, we actually hit the upper boundary of how long prints can run in theaters. And I can tell you how long that is. It's 16 weeks. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. But the point is that for the last half of that, they looked pretty ragged. They were all scratched up, big green scratches and everything. So all that stuff is in the past, and we're really in a brave new world right now. And I think that, you know, the con everybody thought the conversion to digital projection was going to take place in and of itself. And I did as well, thinking back 10 years ago now. And uh, that the, and in my mind, the 3D would just kind of quietly piggyback in on this huge wave of acceptance of digital projection. In fact, it worked the other way around. The 3D was the catalytic agent that actually precipitated the, this big change that took place. And it's being 3D ready and being 3D compliant that is driving so many people toward toward uh, the digital rollout around the world. And, and you know, great thanks to to Michael and to Josh Greer, you know, his partner at, at uh, Realty. So, Jim, get up! Come on, guys, they, they did it.